what's up Rare Network? Welcome into day number one here of Rare Evo 2025, taking place at none other than Caesars Palace in Las Vegas. To my right, I've got Jay, the director of the Coos. Yeah, man. News platform building on the Polkadot ecosystem. How are you, man? I'm doing great, nice to see you. Likewise, yeah. likewise. Now, for anybody who's seeing you for the first time, what do you do for Polkadot before we dive a little bit deeper into the network itself? Now, my company serves Polkadot internal communication. So there's a lot of moving parts with Polkadot, right? We have foundation, major building network. Then we have all these different roll-ups mm -hmm. and all dot holders have the opportunity to dictate the future of the network through governance. So we make we maintain these platforms mm -hmm. for all the people who are doing the big things to come on and talk about what they're doing. Got we do it. In-person podcast every week. Twice a week we do live governance shows, major news shows on Friday. We do data charts. We do little short news clips. We keep everybody on the same page so that we can grow together. Dude, I love that. Um, unity and unison is so important in this space, you know, because a lot yeah. of times people are on different pages and that only causes chaos. That's right. Now, that aside, just for a little bit, what is Polkadot? And for anybody who hasn't heard about it, you know, can you maybe highlight at a very sort of high level the tech that makes all this happen? Sure. Well, Polkadot was designed by Gavin Wood, who's the guy who took the idea of Ethereum and made smart contracts work. Then he left the Ethereum. Uh, ecosystem to build Polkadot, which was supposed to be this highly scalable sharded network. Mm -hmm. So Polkadot today operates like the hub and roll-up spoke model. Uh, every roll-up has its own specialty. And Polkadot's really suited for the total addressable market of Web3. Right? We have crypto Twitter over here. We have the total addressable market over here. We're working on taking a bite out of this. And the project just behind you is one example of that. They're called Mythos, mm -hmm. and uh, they're a gaming chain. Look at this, NFL IP, FIFA IP, Pudgy Penguins IP. They just released their FIFA Rivals game six weeks ago. Over a million people downloaded that game. None of them know they're using Polkadot. It doesn't matter. But they're playing the game, they're generating assets, they're trading with each other, and that's all facilitated by our high throughput tech stack. Wow, that's impressive to see and to hear. It's cool. Now, maybe looking a little bit you know, forward or into the future, yeah. you know, You've seen some successes. Yeah. What are you guys sort of targeting now? There's been talks about AI, you know, emerging sure. tech. Yeah. You know, what's currently being worked on? So the gaming vertical is very strong. Deep in vertical is also very strong. So getting the whole machine economy, not only on chain, mm -hmm. but in an environment where they can work together. So there's a major uh, roll up called Peak that's operating mm -hmm. on that. Social is another big vertical. And then finally, um, at the core polka dot level, we're trying to, you know, build this network state, right? So we're trying to solve this proof of personhood problem. How do you verify that you're a human without giving away all your details? We're trying to address that issue. So how can we have Web3 citizens come on and participate in a new online world that, you know, we feel this, this censorship coming down pretty hard right now. I don't know if you're following what's happening in the UK right now. People need into KYC to use common websites yes. and all this crap. It's pretty serious business and we haven't lost sight of that initial Web3 mission. Now, something else that we're talking about just a moment ago was governance. Yeah, yeah. Um, a lot of emerging ecosystems, for example, like Cardano, which I focus on, yeah, it, are sort of in interesting governance in Cardano. Yes. We're watching. We're watching. We're, well, I feel like it's the opposite. I feel like we've been watching you guys as well. Oh yeah, you know? totally. So you know what? What does governance look like in an ecosystem like yours? It's it's highly liquid and very accessible. So anybody who holds the DOT token mm -hmm. has the ability to create mm -hmm. a referendum to spend the treasury or to upgrade the network. Mm -hmm. And then anybody with the DOT token has the opportunity to vote mm -hmm. on those proposals. And those fundamentals can lead to all kinds of crazy results, right? Huge spend proposals, some of them get through, some of them don't. Uh, one project that I'm working on right now is to actually cap the DOT supply. So make it a cap supply, because it's not capped right now. So this is an initiative I'm doing. We're going to go all through governance, building the, the momentum to make it happen. And this is something I can do as a dot holder. Mm -hmm. I'm not a millionaire dot holder. Not but yet. I, not not yet. yet, but I am, <laughs> I am a passionate community member and I've built a reputation. And this governance system is open to people like me to, to make change in the ecosystem. So lots of cool elements. It's, uh, this governance style is super open. So there's, no, there's not a lot of bureaucracy built in. If you have the token, you're a player in the game, and that's how that's how we're running it. And that's how it should be, you know. Um, it shouldn't just be whale games. 
Right. It shouldn't be big bag holder games. Yeah, you know? yeah. Everybody and anybody should be able to feel as if they can contribute. Sure. And even if it's not something that, that, that actually gets passed, mm -hmm. at least having the ability to raise it mm -hmm. and to get the word out there. Yeah, you know, exactly. Because you really never know, right? Totally. Um, so that said, you know, giving us sort of like a bird's eye view, you talked about some pretty big names. Yeah. But what else is being built on the blockchain? Oh, one really exciting one coming up. It's called Mandala Chain. So this is another roll-up, mm. right? Every roll-up on Polkadot has its own specific domain. It does mm. its own special thing. Mandala is a blockchain for Indonesia. The Indonesian government is behind the chain. And Indonesia, I don't know if you know, 240 million people, fourth largest population in the planet. Wow. Their ID is going on chain. Their regional banking is going on chain. Um, government services and management is going on chain. This is launching very soon. And this is a roll up all on Polkadot. This is what we can do with the sharded architecture with high throughput. We can handle hundreds of millions of people. And that's just like another cool example. And that's, that's just impressive. the first country that this uh, Mandala project has announced. And they have another one uh, already in the bag. Wow, that's yeah. impressive. You said how many million? Indonesia? Yes. 240 million, if I'm not mistaken. Wow. And I went there last year. They really believe that blockchain and Web3 is a major opportunity mm -hmm. to lift their nation up. Uh, they call it um, Project 2045, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. And blockchain is a massive part of making the country more efficient mm -hmm. and more attractive to business and capital. It's wow. really cool. No, I'm excited for you guys yeah. and for all the Indonesians that finally will be able to, you know, see and maybe not necessarily directly, you know, feel the impact of blockchain, but as a nation yeah. to be able to leverage such an emerging technology. Yeah, weaving Web3 into people's everyday lives is the ultimate goal here, right? Like, we don't think about the protocols we use when we're cruising the internet, but our lives are made so rich because of the internet. So we want to enrich people's lives. Like, um, it's not so much about the logos and the tokens, but it's about the technology and, yeah. and getting it to as many people as possible. Yeah, no, again, that's massive and I'm happy for you guys. Thanks, bro. Now, Jay, as we get ready to wind things down, for anybody who wants to, you know, get involved with the Polkadot ecosystem, oh, the yeah. Coos, you know, how can they do that? Oh, they just got to follow the Coos. Any of your favorite platforms, the KUS, the Coos. Look for a little pink robot on a yellow background. Follow, subscribe, and after a few weeks, uh, the chaos will start to settle and you'll start to see what's happening here. There's lots of momentum, lots of energy, lots of opportunity. I always say Polkadot is fertile ground for people who can actually build. People who aren't, don't just have ideas, but are able to actually execute. Polkadot is fertile ground. So if follow along a bit, you'll probably see an opportunity to slot in. And I'm sure they'll see your face on the coast. Oh, you'll see my uh, face on the coast. Again, yeah. thank you for your time. I appreciate it. For you watching at home, hopefully you guys have found this to be informational, educational, right? And just a little bit of a glimpse inside the Polkadot ecosystem. Again, thank you for your time, man. What a pleasure. Thanks so much. Good, nice.